the reason I can read your mind is because I don't need to read your mind. There's no new thought. There's no new story. There's no new struggle. The human condition is the same no matter where you go. Now, there's two kinds of humans. There's a spirit walker, walker. And there's the flesh walker. The spirit mind goes back to source. The flesh mind stays in the creation down downfalling system. When you rightly divide the word of truth, whether it's Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Ephesians, Colossians, Revelation, Genesis, you pretty much start to see a pattern evolve. And then when you go about your repeat cycle in the daily routines and you rub shoulders with different kinds of people, you start to see the same repeat. And you start to hear the same words or comments that people make. <laughs> if you can go back to source source code truth and then you then you derive from there derive is off river so you derive the 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 next thought from source you just unfold it when somebody makes a comment they say why don't this industry provide for me such and such health care maternal leave, whatever. When somebody says something like that, you can derive what they're thinking. If a person's running a, a business, they're going to have to manage their own ship, you know? But if you want somebody else to manage your ship for you, why are you running a business? Running a business is, is hard takes a lot of management and diligence. But if you want to work for somebody else and be a, uh, claim to be your own boss at the same time, like the gig economy or whatever, you might have to, you might have to do, you might have to spend a little bit of money on health insurance, you know? out in the universe something that somebody needs to hear if they ever listen to it the universe turns universe one turn and it turns very slow the cogs turn but they turn slow the reason the cogs turn so slow is because you can't handle but so much or you might have a nervous breakdown god knows that you're just flesh. You're weak. The flesh is nothing but sin, and the flesh is nothing but weakness. God give gave you a system of turning to teach you. The universe is your university. And if you just take enough time and cut the noise off, cut the music off, cut the TV off, cut the Internet off, whatever you got to do, you can use the Internet to study also. But you can do the research any way you want. But you've got to start thinking. And as you think and you approach source, you realize Jesus already made a way. He could read people's mind. God can read your mind. How do you think the devil knows what to hit you with?
if it happens over and over and over and over and over again, you already know what's going to happen before it happens. Same with thoughts. If a person uses an off-river process, a logical conclusion, derive, and you take their thoughts and their words that they speak, because out of the heart the mouth speaks. So when they speak, it reveals their thoughts. Body language, actions, thoughts, interactions, who they hang out with, what kind of music they listen to, what they're interested. Why I I, I used to, I, I I figured it out. It took me a while. I figured out how is Google reading your mind even if you don't say anything. It took me a while to figure that one out, but I figured it out. So as you're looking at the screen. They can see what your eyes are gazing upon. So there might be three or four images in one screenshot, right? So they watch, they can tell which image you're interested in or which words you're reading. Do you understand what I'm saying? You'll be talking to somebody at work or at the grocery store or wherever. You'll be talking to somebody and it'll pop up on your email, the very thing you're talking about. How's that possible? They're listening. And they might not be listening to your phone, but they know where you're at and they might be listening to the other person's phone and your voice, they've got a, an imprint. They're making a copy. They're making a digital copy of you. That's why, I mean, really, they're making a digital human. It'll be to the point eventually, which is probably already there, that they can take you out, make a fake you online, and nobody even knows you're dead. They think you're still alive. You died, you passed off the scene, but your image is still there, you're still talking, and they've mimicked you and thrown you into the metaverse. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make a copy of you so that you, and, and you'll be, and, and this is how twisted their thinking is. So somebody's gonna die and say, well, we can make you eternal. You might be dead, but you'll still be here in your family your family will still have access to you because it'll be a, a digital image of you and they can just pull it up and talk to you through an AI program and it looks and talks like you. It'll be you and your family will still be able to interact with you. But you're dead. I mean, really, this is really happening. <laughs> I'm not even joking. It's sad. It's going to happen. You're going to see uh, people marrying robots. You're going to see people talking to their to the people that they love, quote unquote love, who's already dead, but they're going to be talking to them through the through the metaverse. And they're going to tell you, "Do you want to sign up for this program? It's uh, $10,000 and uh, we'll keep your file and your you'll be your data bank of all your images and your words and your conversations. And when your family wants to talk to you, they just pull up to the metaverse and talk to you. See, so you already know what, if you, 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 not only can you read minds because you hit source code, there's on, there's nothing pat. There's only four root words, cut, turn, union, and flow. And as you unfold that, you'll understand. And if you've been married, uh, if you've been married, uh, you, 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 I was just thinking that. I just said that. You read my mind. How's that possible? It's normal. It's normal. But you have the mind of Christ, the Bible says. The Bible says you know all things in Christ. The Bible says you have the mind of Christ and you know all things. How's that possible? Because there's really not a whole lot. It's a worship service, a servant. 
you have the same common human experience. You get up, you go to work, you dread the routine at times. Sometimes you, you, you don't feel like going, but you make yourself. Sometimes you're happy to go. Sometimes you, then you come up with some new ideas and you want to go with this. You want to go, you get tired of driving the same route home. So you do a different route. You'll get to the point that if you talk to somebody long enough, they say the same stuff over and over and over. And you say, didn't we just talk about this? Aren't you growing? Aren't you learning something new? Aren't you moving up, moving on up like the Jeffersons? Moving on up. See, all the sitcoms and all the series and all the sequences and all the movies and all the the novels and the writings and uh the bible and it's it's already written see everything that you look at is a prophecy of the past and the future it's when you read the book of revelation it's actually happening now yes i know that the rapture hadn't took place and i know the mark of the beast has not taken place but you see the precogs of it when they try to put some kind of wristband on you or when they try to get you to take some kind of vaccine that you know you don't want they're trying to put some kind of digital uh, robot in your body to turn you into a machine man you already know what's going to happen see in revelation god puts uh, on the forehead his saints he seals his saints he actually gives you a name that nobody knows but he seals his saints in the tribulation and then the devil Learns how to do it. He's a copycat, right? The devil's just a copycat of God. And so he he creates the mark of the beast. But he don't know how to do it right now. He's experimenting. It's already written in Revelation what's going to happen. So all these times that the that the system is trying to get to 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 impress on you the mark of the beast, it's not going to happen yet till the rapture. The rapture of the church, and then it happens. So when you read Revelation, you see the precogs happening right now. The Bible says there's always an Antichrist waiting on the scene. There's always an Antichrist waiting to be revealed. The Bible talks about that. Why is there always an Antichrist? Somebody says, are they the Antichrist? Are they the, is, is Obama the Antichrist? Is Bush the Antichrist? Is Clinton the Antichrist? Who's the Antichrist? Is Matre who, who's Maitreya? Is Maitreya the is this uh, guru over here the Antichrist? There's always an Antichrist. Because the rapture could happen at any moment. Every day is the same. And so when, this, when the age of the Gentiles comes to an end, there's a rapture. The book of uh, Revelation tells you what happens a times, a times, and a half a time, three and a half years, and then the Antichrist will be revealed because there's no restraining force. The restraining force is the church right now. This is why they hate you, because you restrain their evil. Just the fact that you even exist, you restrain them. They can't even exist without you. This is why they, they, they vampire off of you, but they hate you. They need you, but they hate you. They need you, but they want to kill you. That's happening right now. Why? Because the world wants to kill the two witnesses. The world wants to kill the 144,000. The flesh versus the spirit. Wally Coyote's always chasing Roadrunner. The Jezebel woman wants you and needs you, but she hates you and wants to kill you. Look at the Johnny Depp draw. <laughs> it's so obvious. You can read Amber Heard's mind. All you do is listen to her for a few minutes. You already know what she's 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 like. She's like uh, she's created this reality in her mind that she thinks is normal. And everybody else is looking at her and saying, this is not normal. You're, ju you're justifying yourself. The evidence is there. The jury made the decision. It's obvious you're contradicting yourself. You're not making sense. You're, you're, 
you can't you you pretend to cry you can't even pull up one little tear you you have no repentance you're not sorry you're not in, you're a sociopath psychopath you're not even ashamed there's no shame she's trying she's trying her best to convince the world that her reality her her way of thinking is normal when it's not it's not. She's a narcissist. To the hilt. And I'm not judging her. Everybody's been a, everybody's a narcissist in some ways, but everybody used to be, and everybody moves from that. See, most people, when you when you deal when you when you kind of separate yourself for years, I was selling books online, and then I went back to the the world and as soon as you walk out into the world you can see it in their eyes everybody's wanting something they don't want to give they want to take and so if a person has a mindset of just take 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 they're destroying their own soul this universe is a reciprocal universe and if somebody's just taking 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 eating 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 it's no different than the physical if they spiritually are just feeding and never giving. If they're emotionally and mentally and psychologically just taking, taking, eating, eating, eating. Just like in the natural. If you just eat, 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 eat. And you don't exercise. You don't move. You don't sweat. You don't move around. What are you going to do? You're going to get sick. You're going to have fatty liver. You're going to get fat. You're going to be lazy. You're going you're gonna to blame everybody else. You're going to be dependent. You're going to have a mindset of dependency. Instead of giving, you create a mindset of dependency. Somebody's got to take care of me. Somebody's got to do it for me. Somebody, you, if you don't give ever, your mind is corrupt. If you start to give, you'll actually receive more. But see, a person who just takes, takes, takes and never gives, they have a, a mindset of being a hoarder. They hoard stuff. They don't believe stuff can flow through them. See, what happens is when you understand how the universe works, you, become, you come to realize that when it flows through you, when it flows through you, You have everything you need. Let's well, say you need shoes. Start selling shoes. You'll have all the shoes you want. Start giving shoes. Start create a business to, to give shoes at a discount. Give and it shall be given. Pressed down, shaken together. The your your barns will be overflowing. If you give and you let it flow through you, instead of having the mindset of you're just going to hoard it and store it, you're, you're, you're creating a, a, a sickness. The water has to flow, because if you drink water that's not flowing, you're going to get sick. The blood has to flow. The money has to flow. The currency has to flow between the banks. In a marriage, if you're just taking, 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 you're destroying your marriage. In, in a friendship, you just take, take. If you interrupt somebody while they're talking, you're destroying a, a, a conversation. There's always give and take, even in every conversation. If you're always doing the talking and you're over-talking somebody else, that's the Jezebel spirit. You think your words are more important than theirs. You think that they learn from you, but you can't learn from them. You learn from everybody. You can learn from a child. The whole universe is teaching you. Just listen. It's it's better to listen than to speak. You got two ears and one mouth for a reason. And if you just observe and listen, you don't need to read minds. You already know where somebody is at on the path. And the, let me just let me finish this because I I just came out to my car to turn the air on because my uh, 
my air condition. I need to go get me a new, new unit. It's, it's just too hot. <laughs> it's ridiculous. We had a heat wave. Let me say this. Jesus is the path. He made a path for you. When you follow after Jesus, you follow the path. How do you get, how do you follow the path? You renew your mind. Be not conformed to this world, but you transform by the renewing of your mind. And so you follow Jesus and you get the mind of Christ and you're following after Christ. And as you rightly divide the word of truth, you see the legalist. You see the Jezebel. You see the, the flesh mind. You see the downward spiral. But then you see the spirit mind, which is an upward, upward spiral. And so the two contrast, one's a type and one's an anti-type of Christ. And so all you have to do is use a, a derivation method in your mind to derive the river is off river. So Jesus is the path. So you've, he's, he's the flow. And so as you derive from source, the way you're supposed to think and what's true and what's right and what's honest and what's lovely and what's good report and what's, what's the, the, the proper way of thinking and standing and meditating and all that. So as you, as you rightly divide the path, you can also see the anti-path. And so if you pay attention to your thoughts and if your thoughts line up with the mind of Christ, you can see the anti-Christ mindset. You don't need to read their mind. You just already know where they are on the path. And so you know their mindset. Why do they call it a mindset? Because a person set on selfishness or unselfishness. A person set on take or give. A person set on complaining or getting the solution. If you work with somebody and they're always complaining... And they don't come up with a solution. You already know. To distance yourself. If every time somebody calls you on the phone. And they're negative. They're affecting you. We all have. We all need to vent. Don't get me wrong. I'm not being judgmental. I'm not saying everybody's perfect. I'm just saying. If you really want to understand really what's going on here, there's no new thought and there's no new path. There's only one path and there's only one train of thought. That's why it's called train of thought. It's a train. It's a series of thoughts. And as you approach source, that train of thought lines up with one path, that, that one path. And so when you are on the path and the proper train of thought, all you had to do is flip it, and you know the train. You you know the train of thought of the flesh mind, and you know that they those that are of the flesh mind are on a down, downward spiral, and it's so evil and so wicked. You don't even want to take your mind down that path. You could follow that path down, and you're going to see the path is in Galatians five nineteen, and it leads to murder. Your mind, you don't even want to think like them. They, they, they think it's okay to kill a human when God is the, the only one that can take life. You can know the mind of, of the Russian president, so-called Putin, the Russian dictator Putin. You know his mind. Hitler's already showed you his mind. The other dictators have showed you his mind. You already can read the mind of Putin by just using a derivation method and it derives from history and stories and all you do is go watch a movie. The, the, the screenwriters, the movie, the, the script writers, they already revealed to you the mind of a psychopath, the mind of a sociopath. It just hit me. You can actually see the mind of uh, Amber Heard if you watched that movie uh, of a long time ago where the guy said, Stella, what was it? Something train where he was crying, Stella. 
he was abusing Stella. Stella, I love you. I can't live without you. Amber, she's abusing Johnny, but she loves Johnny. But the guy that played the the man in that movie, I don't even, uh, who was it? A train car, a train car called something. But anyway, whatever his name was, he was a popular, popular actor. He was a good actor. But he was playing the, he was playing the selfish, narcissistic, sociopath, psychopath. And he actually, uh, slept with the girl's, his wife's sister and drove her mad. She ended up in a insane asylum. And, but he, he, the whole time he thought he was, he was loving his wife, but he wasn't, he didn't know what love was, but his reality, his fake reality, he wanted her to accept. And this is what I said in a recent video. When you got people around you who want you to accept their lies and their fake reality and you don't, they will write you off. It doesn't matter if it's bloodline, neighbors, friends, family. it doesn't matter who it is. If you don't accept their fake reality, they will cut you off. If you don't enable their fake reality and you're telling them the truth, they will cut you off. You're their best friend, but they hate you. Jezebel wanted to kill Elijah. But look what happened to her. She got thrown out the window and the dog ate up her blood, licked up her blood. What happened? Jezebel has, had brainwashed Ahab so much that Ahab said, Are you the one causing trouble in Israel? And Ahab said, No, it's you causing trouble because you let that woman rule your house. And the reason, uh, see, the reason that Jezebel was creating those 450 lying, false, flying monkey prophets is because she was insecure. She didn't belong. So Amber heard she married into somebody who was a legend. And she was jealous, and she wanted to. She wanted his power. She wanted to be like him and be pop. She wanted to take on his image, and then flip him into a copy of her. Every narcissist thinks the same. They want to steal your your gift, steal your image, steal your popularity, steal your your knowledge, steal your material or whatever. They want to steal it take on your image and project their destructive image onto you. They want to make you look like them. They want to vampire and flip the roles. It's a, it's a form of witchcraft, to be honest with you, but it's the ultimate flesh mind. If you take the flesh mind to its nth degree, it goes back to what happened in Genesis 3. Hath God said, you won't die. You'll be God. You'll be like God. You'll be your own God. Genesis 3 reveals the MK Ultra mind control system of the narcissist. It's a fractal hologram. You already know how Amber Heard thinks. You already know how President Putin dictator thinks. You already know what they're going to do before they do it. There's nothing new under the sun. What has been shall be. What shall be has been. And so you don't really need to read somebody's mind to read their mind because you already have the script. And all the movie scripts have to line up in some port, some way, shape, or form with the Bible because every his word is forever settled in heaven. And that is the script of all scripts. And so when somebody does a horror show script, it's the left side of the cross where Jesus had to die. When somebody does a love story script, it's when Jesus went to the cross and died for his creation. When somebody does a victorious script, a war where they win, it's the right side of the cross where he rose again. When somebody talks, does a time travel movie, it's the Holy Spirit coming back and sealing the saints and making a copy of the saints, the elect saints down here. Time travel is going back and becoming a, an ambassador for Jesus, the mind you're you're down here as a copy. 
the, the Holy Spirit in you is an exact copy of Jesus. You have the earnest of spirit, but the Spirit of God's an exact copy. So you're walking down here in his stead, following his path in sequence, in series, after. So just like you watch a movie, you're actually watching yourself. You go back a year later, you identify with one character one year. You identify with a different different character another year and if you watch a series you see each character will either grow and become a better person or some characters become worse and that is the the, the storyline of all things and if you listen to enough uh teachers and gurus and people talking and talk to enough people People start to say the same stuff over and over and over and over and over and over and over. There's nothing new. This is why when you talk to somebody who's older, 70, 80, 90, they really don't have much to say because they've heard it all. There's no new game. Your boss plays the same games as any other boss. Your employees play the same game as any other employees. It's the same repeat. It's the same game. Your neighbor plays the same game as any other neighbor. They play the same game. It doesn't matter if you're in a poor neighborhood or a rich neighborhood. You got bad neighbors in every neighborhood. You got good neighbors in every neighborhood. Why? Because the storyline repeats. The only thing, the, the good thing about being having money though, would you could put up boundaries. You, you could you could be out on you wouldn't have to see your neighbors you know but they still figure figure out a way to irritate you you know there's always going to be some kind of irritation down here that's why we have bugs get away from me you're bugging me why do they say it because there's bugs everywhere because this is a this system's most people are bugged out in their mind. Their mind, they're bugged out. They're drugged out. They're drunken out. They're out of their mind. They're tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. So my point is, as you, as you follow in series or in sequence the path of Christ, you don't need to read their mind, although at times he will let you. You already know what they're thinking because of where they're at on the path. Just out of the words, the body language, who they hang out with, what they... Body language is a real deal. If you, if you were to study body language and become a master at body language, you really would... I'm not going to say what I was going to say. I mean, if you really wanted to uh, rise up in a in a dead corporate system, all you had to do is study body language and you could just rise up. But it's, all, it's, <laughs> it's just a copy machine. Look at your kids. They sound like you. Why? It's a copy machine. If it's a copy machine and you put a you put a piece of paper on the copy machine and you hit the start button, S T Art, right? So you hit the start button, you're making a copy of that piece of paper. And you hand it to somebody else. So, so you write your thoughts on a copy on a piece of paper. You hit the, and you you hand it to somebody. What am I thinking? I don't know. It's right there on the paper. It's a copy. Read it. Okay. Same thing. The cogs on a wheel turn. As the cogs turn, each tooth on the cog looks like the other teeth. And as they turn, it's, even though they're different, they're the same. S-A-M-E. S is integrating. 
A is blood, M is water, E is spirit. The same. In the spirit realm, it's all oneness. In the natural realm, it's all division. And so S-A-M-E tells you that God is integrating the blood, the water, and the spirit creatures back into oneness with him. When you see Jesus, you'll be like him. The very word S-A-M-E tells you everything you need to know, really, about what God's program here, here is about. God is integrating the elect saints back into oneness with him. S is integration. A is your blood. M is water. E is the spirit in you. He's integrating you back in to the mind of Christ, to the image of Christ. God made man in his image. It's a copy machine. Be fruitful and multiply. Reproduce. Reproduction. It's a copy. And so the mind of Christ is being printed out like a, like a printing machine. Through When you put the paper on the copy machine, it go, the, the cogs turn, right? The, the, the paper goes through that machine and it goes through a bunch of rollers and the cogs turn and it turns out a copy. So as you think, as a man thinketh, so is he, you become a copy of the mind of Christ. If it's a flesh creature who, who is a Babylonian goat, they become a copy of the devil. It's really easy. And so you already know what they're thinking before you even, before they open their mouth once you meet them because they have no new thought. And so all the goats think the same and all the true sheep think the same. Eventually you think like the mind of Christ. It takes a while, but you'll get there. And so in all situations, you know, if you're being lazy, that's not the mind of Christ. You know, if you're uh, being greedy, that's not the mind of Christ. You know, if you're uh, overeating, that's not the mind or action of Christ. You already know, you already have the mind of Christ. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the Word of God. You can rightly divide it. It's actually right in front of you. You're in it. Not only are you reading the Word when you take it and you read it, but you're in it and it's in you. The Word is encoded in your, your, your organs, your body, your fingers, your face. It's encoded on your face. you got a mirror image in your body. Symmetry. Sim. Symmetric. Together. Synonymous the same when you gaze upon something you behold it what you behold you become what thoughts you hold in your mind it appears Lo and behold, lo and behold, the Alpha and the Omega, Logos, Lo, G, O, S, lo and behold, G, the operating system, take up your cross and follow me. Every moment, it's, and there's really nothing else, really. If you don't take up your cross, you're going to be miserable. If you do take up your cross, at first you think this is misery, but then it becomes normal. There's really nothing else. Jesus set the pattern. When you learn how to take up your cross, that's when you enter into joy. Because you know it's really not about you. It's about being a servant while you're here. It doesn't matter what, where you're at, who you are, what you're doing. If you want to be happy, become a servant. But if you want people serving you and washing your feet, you'll never be happy. But if you learn how to be a servant, then you'll be happy. Put that in the bank. I can tell you, your thought, if you're not happy, it's because you're not serving. 
If you're not happy, you're not giving. If you're not happy, you're, you're not living in the now. If you're not happy, you're blaming everybody else. I already know your thoughts. If you're not happy, you're probably listening to the news all the time. You're probably watching the news too much. If you're not motivated, you're probably watching in too much internet. Or you're eating sugar, too much sugar. It's all revealed. There's nothing there's nothing hidden. It's all been revealed. Adam and Eve, they ran and they hid from God. Did you eat of the tree? Of the, uh, did you eat of the tree? He knew. He already knew. They were hiding. They put some fig leaves on to cover themselves. But he had to do a sacrifice. And that, those fig leaves didn't keep them warm. He had to do a sacrifice an animal, which pointed to Christ. To have a covering. Jesus is your, the blood of Christ is your covering. You're hiding. Where are you going to run? You can't hide from God. He's, if you dig down into hell, God is there. If you try to climb up to heaven, God is there. If you get under a rock, God is there. If you go into the mountains, and hide, God is everywhere. You can't hide. You're running from yourself because you can't run from God. Why are you running from yourself? Because you don't want to face the music. You don't want to see... see before you get saved, you can't admit you're a sin, a sinful creature that you deserve hell. You don't want to look at your sin because it's so evil. You don't want to look at your 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 old Adamic nature, the old Adam or the old Eve. You don't want to see your sin. You don't. Want, you want to blame everybody else. Amber cannot look in the mirror. She wants to blame. She wants to blame the judge, the jurors. If we if we didn't have if we didn't have jurors, the judge would have sided with me. I mean, come on. The purpose of the jurors is so the judge isn't. Uh, the purpose for having peers to make a judgment is more compassion. The judge could be in a bad mood, but you got enough jurors; they're all going to be discussing it and coming to a conclusion. I mean, really. She's in a fake. She's in her own fake reality, and nothing is not even the pressure of the whole world is is knocking her down. The pressure of the whole world. She can't look in the mirror. She's being look. It's the epitome of psychopathy. She can't even. After all that pressure, she still can't admit. It's it's sad. Vasquez, she says, so the man you're afraid of, you gave him a knife as a as a gift? You know what she was trying to do. She was trying to get him to kill himself. She was trying to get him to kill himself. Deep down, it was the Jezebel spirit. She's, she was deep down jealous, and she needed him, but she hated him at the same time. Just like your flesh mind. Your flesh mind hates you. Every time you see that, that sugar, your flesh mind wants to eat it. But your spirit mind says, no, that sugar is poison. Every time you see that cigarette, if you're, if you're a smoker, that's, that flesh mind says, I need that. My nerves are bad or whatever you, whatever smoke, the re, I don't know why people smoke, but whatever it is, I got to have that puff because I, I, I just need to calm down or whatever, they, whatever it does to you. But your spirit mind says, no, you don't need that. But your flesh mind says, yeah, I want to destroy you. I want to kill you. The flesh mind wants to kill, your flesh mind wants to kill you. Your spirit mind wants you to have health and wholeness and unity and oneness and happiness and joy. 
but your flesh mind wants to destroy you. Amber wanted to destroy him. And she wanted to steal her his identity and, and flip it onto her. There's no new pattern. There's no new, there's nothing new under the sun. This is the truth. Whether you can hear me or not, it's on you. I really don't care. I, I do care, but I don't care. I care. I hope you hear me. Those who hear me, praise God. Hallelujah. Those who reject it, I shake the dust off my feet and I walk on. But I'm telling you the truth. I don't need to read your mind. But I can read your mind all the same because there's nothing new. All the stories in the Bible, they're playing out right now. All the movies, all the scripts, they're playing out. They're little sub-fractals. The book of Revelation is playing out. No, the rapture hasn't taken place. No, they haven't sealed us with the mark of the beast yet because they can't. Because the church restrains. But they're trying. They try to take away your free will. The, the, what's the deal with the mark of the beast? All it is is trying to steal your free will. Your free choice. What is a dictator doing? Trying to take away your choice. Trying to take away your freedom of speech. Trying to take away your ability to make a choice. What happens when they sell their soul to the devil? They gave up their free will. They want they. Why would somebody do it? You already know why they do it. You know what they're thinking. They're scared deep down. They're pleasers of men instead of pleasers of God. Ple lovers of pleasure instead of lovers of God. They want somebody to take care of them. They sold their soul to the devil because they want somebody to take care of them instead of trusting God and walking by faith. They walk by sight. You already know how they think. It's all been revealed. It's really easy. It's really easy. It's really the easy button. All you have to do is memorize Galatians. Memorize Ephesians. Memorize Colossians. Read your Bible. Look for the patterns in the movies. Look for the patterns in the series because they're all subsets of the true script, which is the scripture. Is what it is. You either call me crazy or you accept it. Uh, I told you war was on the way when I saw the blue lights start to appear. How did I know that? Blue is law. Law. When the white lights turn to blue, There's a dictator coming, and the dictator goes crazy and goes to war because they get paranoid. The paranoia that you're dealing with is the flesh mind. It's not the spirit mind. If you have paranoia. There's the truth. You accept it or you reject it. There's nothing hid. There's nothing hidden. It's all been revealed. You can run, but you can't hide.